Hi, this is Gascan, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make spur gears in Fusion 360 the easy way. So stuff like this, and up to small stuff, well down to small stuff like this, uh, so that you can put them on small motors. Or basically anything, just how to make gears like this, and this, and this. And uh, yeah, just how to make them super duper quickly in Fusion. Alright, so let's start by making a new design. I always like to go top view right away. So the easiest and quickest quickest way to make a spur gear in Fusion 360 is just go to tools up at the top. Then you go into add-ins because these are just the predestined things that Fusion 360 has available to it. So this is every single Fusion 360 user has access to all these. And they're just a bunch of predetermined things. We got bolts, bottles, basically anything. And you want to click on spur gear. It doesn't matter if you use the Python or the C++, just whichever one you prefer. And then it brings you to a basically modeling. So what we've got over here, I'm just going to move this since my face is right there. You'll see this right here. It's a little gear. Then you have hole diameter, pitch diameter, root fillet radius, and then your module. So basically the most important thing is going to be your module. What's this? It's going to be the pitch diameter divided by your number of teeth. So what that is, let's just uh, make this one real quick. And bam, so we've got this. Now, what does this mean? What did all those numbers mean? We'll just open it again. When you create a spur gear and then make a new one, it'll keep all those, those same settings. So if you make it another one, it'll be exactly the same. So what's going on here? Let's start with the modulus. That's pretty much the most important number. So that's literally just your size ratio. If you have the same modulus for different types of gears, they're going to be the same teeth ratio. So I've got a gear right here. This is a modulus of about 1.2. So it's got very small teeth compared to its size. And here it's same modulus. So they're going to fit together. So they're going to be able to roll. So that's going to be the same as if we go to I have an example right here. That's the same exact one as these over here. So that's a 1.2 gear modulus. All right. So let's go back to our utility. Okay. So that's your modulus. If you want to make gears that work together, you have to keep the same modulus. Now your modulus, it's literally, if you have more teeth, then your diameter is going to start growing. If you take out teeth, diameter is going to start shrinking and then your pitch diameter is basically where you want your gears to interact so that's this right here and if we go over here then as you can see these gears they spin together and their pitch diameter are just about touching because that's where is the ideal place for them to be touching together in real world scenarios so how do you want to make a gear for your own specific use so we're going to look pressure angle. That's literally just the angle at which the gear is putting pressure onto the other gear. So uh, I prefer just to keep the 20. It makes everything simple for printing purposes. Uh, and it basically just changes the uh, the angle like here. Uh, actually down here, it just uh, changes how this hits the other gear. All right. And then we've got the uh, backlash. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't change very much then you have the root fillet radius. So that's going to be right here. This radius right here, uh, it just basically changes uh, the fidelity of a print. So if you want them tougher, you'll make that radius uh, a little bit thicker. So it kind of fillets it more. And if it doesn't really matter, you can keep it lower. Then your gear thickness, that's literally going to be how thick it is this way. So if you want it thicker, if it's a pile drive, you might want it a little bit thicker so that it has uh, more room for another gear to be able to hit it. And then you have the hole diameter. That's going to be this diameter right here, that hole right there. And uh, for most gears, if uh, for most uh, motors, if you have a DC motor, it's going to be a two millimeter or a little bigger than two millimeter radius. So if you're printing, go two millimeters so it's a little bit tighter, so it sticks right in there. All right, let's go ahead and delete this gear right here. Delete that whole thing. We're going to make a new one. We're going to make a small gear, and then I'm going to show you how to make it like into a skeleton gear. You can edit it. So we're going to go ahead and make something similar to this. We're just going to go and make a new design. We're going to go into tools, add-ins, scripts, go all the way down to spare gear, and we'll make something new. So we're going to go something more along the lines of eight teeth. Or you know what? We'll go six teeth. And we're going to have a modulus of, my free modulus is about one or two. We'll go with one, make it real small. 
and our hole diameter is going to be two millimeters. And so you'll always have warnings down here to help you out to see if these everything is going to work. Work your root fill radius is too large, must be less than 0.59 millimeters. So basically, just bring it down to 0.58. Bam, it'll work. So we got a tiny, tiny little gear here. Actually, we might want to make this a little bit bigger just because there's no point in making it a spur gear. The only reason, um, a skeleton gear, the only reason you want to skeletonize something is to make the printing faster or just make it more lightweight. Like this right here, it brings down the actual cost uh, quite a bit, about half. And uh, it'll be pretty much just as strong because it's ABS plastic. Doesn't really matter if it's all there. So let's just make another one, but slightly bigger. A uh, way to do this to make it so that they actually fit together if you wanted for some reason both teeth Just go in literally just add some teeth. We're gonna make this you know what 18 teeth perfect and we're just gonna move this over to the side and They fit together perfectly. So now if we want to make this a skeleton gear, we're just gonna go ahead and Click on our gear that we want to change and sketch it so We're sketching on this plane. We're just gonna make that one invisible real quick all right so what i personally do i try to find the plane that it's laying on so the uh the perfect i like making mine symmetrical so we look at this green line right here that's the one that's going straight through because it's on the center so what i do i just grab a circle and uh make a circle right here that's actually a little close to the edges so we're just gonna make a circle again make it whatever size you like not a big science to it since it's a very small gear and make a slightly smaller circle. And then we're gonna connect them with a line. And then these ones are tangential, but you can see right here, these ones aren't tangential. So to fix that, we just grab the tangent line, tangential, and tangential. If you grab the line first and then the circle, it's gonna keep the circle in its place. So bam, now we finished the sketch. Now we're gonna have to cut through it. So to do that, we just extrude, shift click on everything to make it go good. And then we are going to rotate a little bit. And how th our thickness, it was 12.7. So we're going to go negative 12.7 millimeters. And it cuts all the way through. As you can see, bam, cut all the way through. But now we want to make it even all the way around. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a pattern, circle pattern. And then we're going to pick instead of faces go for features since this is our new feature we want to repeat that now for the axis you grab whatever axis you can either try to click on the z axis or you can just click these the center hole because we want it around the center hole so now we just pick how many we want add them until it looks quite nice I'm just gonna there we go we're gonna add a few more and that looks about right right there okay and there we go. We've got our nice skeleton gear. We could probably make those skeletons, uh, those holes a little bit bigger to make save on some plastic. But this right here is good enough. All right. So that's how you quickly make a gear in Fusion 360. If you have any other questions, like how to make the gears spin like they do over here, just let me know and I'll make another video about it. Thanks for watching. All right, so if you like that video, please consider subscribing if you want to see any more uh, tutorials in Fusion 360. I've also got a new weight loss challenge coming up in the next few weeks, uh, and it's going to be as much weight that I can lose in 60 days. Uh, so I'm going to be trying to get abs since I've always wanted abs ever since I was a little kid. I'm going to try to do that in 60 days. Actually, it's going to be right on my birthday is when the challenge ends. And uh, if I do get abs, I'm going to challenge myself to eat 10 pumpkin pies in one day, which is about 38,000 calories. Probably not doable, but I'm going to try my hardest. So if you want to see that, please subscribe. And the first week of the challenge should be going up in uh, the next uh, three weeks. If you've got any questions in Fusion that you'd like to uh, know about or any questions about this video, please let me know in the comments below.